Adult green lacewings are delicate, beautiful creatures, while their larvae are not likely to win a beauty contest. Yet, the behavior of larval lacewings is arguably the most interesting phase of the species' life history. Green lacewings lay their eggs in clusters, with each egg attached to a long, slippery stalk. Hatchlings are big-headed larvae with long, piercing mandibles and curved spines that protrude from the sides of the body. The first order of business of newly hatched green lacewings is to adorn their bodies with empty egg cases and stalks. A good choice given that egg stalks are coated with ant repellent. Soon after hatching, many larvae seek out aphid colonies for food, hence their common name, aphid lions. Along with killing their prey, the larvae cover their bodies with the shriveled remains of their victims. But for what purpose? Are they attempting to build a disguise, or perhaps a shield, that will protect them from larger predators? Over time, the amount of items a larval lacewing carries on its back increases. Understandably. This doesn't mean, however, that an aphid lion must carry the corpse of each aphid that it kills. To the contrary, molted skins make the best accessories. Furthermore, a lion's first meal is unlikely to be a live aphid. Instead, young lacewing larvae also relish the sweet honeydew secreted by aphids the same concoction sought after by ants. Ironically, the quest for honeydew is perhaps the reason why aphid lions bother to build a protective shield. Consider the following facts. Although aphids are docile creatures that spend most of their time feeding on plants, they have evolved several effective means of defense. Along with living in colonies where there is safety in numbers, aphids solicit ants as bodyguards. In effect, aphids and ants have established a mutualistic relationship whereby ants, in return for repelling predators, are rewarded with an ample supply of sweet honeydew. Unlike their namesake, aphid lions do not coordinate members of a pride when attacking. Also, they do not attempt to scatter their quarry when approaching an aphid colony. Aphid lions are solitary predators that use stealth when approaching prey so as not to evoke a retaliatory response from attending ants. Typically, an aphid lion's assault has one objective. Get close enough to grab an aphid and retreat before the colony's bodyguards become aware that something is amiss. Because once pierced by a lion's mandibles, an aphid releases a pheromone to signal to the colony and attending ants that it is being attacked. Once alerted, the best that ants can do, however, thanks to the lion's shield, is to force the intruder to retreat, either by ripping away its armor or by shooting the attacker with formic acid. It wasn't until we watched the videotape did we notice the presence of a surfeit fly maggot, the larva of a hoverfly feeding on an aphid. More surprisingly, the ants accepted the predator. Why don't aphids also emit pheromones when attacked by the maggot? Perhaps they do, but for some reason the ants are unable to identify the source of the threat. According to research, hoverfly maggots feeding on aphids acquire the chemical signature or scent of the aphid colony. Such deception is also used by other species of hoverflies, whose larvae feed not on aphids, but on ant pupae. To best understand lacewings, it's necessary to examine all stages of their metamorphosis, from egg to adult. The third stage, for example, begins when a larva spins a spherical cocoon from which a fully formed adult with wings emerges. The cocoons that are aphid lions spun were covered with the same debris that the larvae carried on their back. Which begs the question, does such debris protect the developing adults from attack from predators, specifically from parasitic wasps?